with the International Court of Justice at The Hague in the Netherlands ruling in India's favor on six counts, all eyes now will be on how Pakistan implements the ICJ's order. In the immediate term, we certainly expect that Pakistan will provide consular access, a meeting between Indian High Commission officials and legal representatives, as well as Kulbushan Jadav. Remember, this is something Pakistan has denied, has failed to do since it uh, arrested Kulbushan Jadav in March 2016 on alleged espionage and terrorism charges. But it is one of Pakistan's commitments under the Vienna Convention. Uh, it did facilitate a meeting between Jadav and his mother and wife in December 2017, but that does not constitute consular access. Beyond that, however, the harder part will be ensuring a full and fair uh, review and recommendation process. This is something the ICJ has ordered. Uh, remember, it doesn't necessarily mean a retrial of Kulbushan Jadav because the ICJ has left the process up to Pakistan's choosing. So the bigger questions are, will Pakistan now make its evidence against Jadav public, something it didn't do in the past? Will it allow Kulbushan Jadav legal representation? And will it conduct this process in a military or in a civilian court? Uh, now, if India feels that the process is unfair, it can still go back in appeal to the ICJ. But beyond that, the UN body's hands are tied. In the past, countries like the United States have certainly even defied uh, ICJ rulings, going ahead and carrying out executions when a stay had been uh, decreed by the ICJ. Uh, given Pakistan's economic troubles as well as the worldwide pressure uh, on it for its support on terrorism, it is unlikely Pakistan will go out in open defiance of the ICJ. But however, bringing Jadhav home uh, is something that will require a political process, direct dialogue between New Delhi and Islamabad, something the government has sought to avoid this far. In New Delhi, for the Hindu, I'm Sohasini Heather.